Okay, so her name is Mariana Vishmiriskaya. So you can check her name. You can Google her name. You'll see the picture of her on there. We continue. Here's once again a, uh, a citizen of Maripol that was on the ground saying again, you couldn't leave. You were not let out. The two old ladies we listened to earlier a couple weeks uh, a week ago said that the Azov soldiers threatened them at gunpoint that they couldn't leave. And she said, because of that, we were fish in a barrel. That's what she said. Or or she said herrings in a battle to, to, to be completely uh, accurate. We continue. Yikes. Now to be fair to them, to be fair to them, it may very well be that they said, look, the place is filled with mines. Now who laid those mines, dear listener? Because I heard that it was an air assault. Now what you heard? I heard it was an air assault over Maripol. Who laid the mines for her to be detonated? Be that as it may, whoever laid the lines, a person could say, well, they were not letting you out the city, not because they wanted to keep you there for cannon fodder, but because they knew the place was outlined with mines and you didn't know where to go and you'd get, you'd get detonated. That is possible. That is very, very, very possible. We continue. Okay, so they... They, the Ukrainian soldiers show up, say everybody's cool. Then they show up randomly and said, nope, everybody has to leave. So this girl is nine months pregnant, about to give birth. Everybody's got to leave the hospital. Still might be a tactical reason for that. We continue. The soldiers will arrive soon and they have to base here because the hospital has solar batteries. This again confirms not only what the old, this is the first time I'm watching this video, not only what the old ladies are saying, but also what other people, also what those teachers said. Remember the, remember the teacher, remember the other guy that we showed the video where the Ukrainian news agency made him apologize on camera. They were setting up howitzers. They were setting up howitzers by kindergartners and they were setting, setting up howitzers by a mall. Now, this is the testimony of the girl that was featured on Time Out, all the rest of these people. She on the ground, this is her statement. She's She is clarifying. They were sending in military assets to this hospital in Maripol. She was told to vacate the hospital nine months pregnant because they, the soldiers, were setting up a hospital, uh, a barrack there or a base there because the hospital had solar batteries. In all the billions and billions of dollars of, uh, of uh, aid that we've given these people, they couldn't afford batteries. You had to have it for the hospital. You couldn't get batteries anywhere else. It's, well, that's one way of looking at it. And another way of looking at it is to say, as I said before, Hezbollah, Hamas, this happened in, in uh, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, etc., etc., where these people would set up shop in, mas in, in mosques, in, madra in schools, in hospitals, and you would find a giant weapons cache there, but you weren't able to light it up because then they then you would blow up the mosque and people say, oh my God, look at the Americans. They have no respect for Rasulullah or, or Allah or look what they did to the masjid, blah, 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 blah. And it was a psychological operations boom. So one explanation for the for, for 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 the soldiers lining up in the hospital is they truly didn't have enough solar batteries or or this was a brilliant tactical psychological operations move because either the Russians allow them to stay in the hospital and have a have basically a home free base that you couldn't touch like when you're playing freeze tag or they could light it up, but if they lit it up, then it would be the Russians are destroying a hospital. You see how that works? I respect it. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's a good tactic. That's what I'm saying. It's a good tactic in war. 
I'm not saying it's a morally good thing to do. I think it's a morally reprehensible thing to do. But I do think it is a good tactic in war, especially if you're fighting somebody that has overwhelming power and numbers against you. It's it's jujitsu. It's using the greatest strength of your, of your enemy against him or her. Okay, so I, I'm not saying Vin is cool. Uh, no, I'm not cool with that. I think it's terrible if that that's what the Azov Battalion did. What I'm saying is it's good strategy to do that. I, I, I think that that's horrible. But I also understand. I, I, I understand. Um, these people are soldiers. They're not going to they're not going to sit there and help you cook. They're at war um, and they're facing probably an impending death. They're not going to the, the, the Ukrainian soldier. I don't care if they're Azov. I don't care who it is. I know what I would do if I was there. I wouldn't help you cook. If I'm about to do jihad facing an enemy that that's uh, superior to me. So <laughs> I saw this too with the older lady. They basically saying the soldiers wouldn't help us. The soldiers wouldn't help us. And it's like, that's not their job. They're, they're killing machines. And uh, they they knew they were about a uh, 24 to 48 hours away from probably getting blown to smithereens because uh, our government and apparently their government has no problems with cannon fodder. And I also think they were probably agitated by the fact that they were using a hospital for a base. Um, so I understand her frustration, but the fact that the soldiers wouldn't help them and took their food. I mean, that's just that's just war 101. I mean, honestly, from the soldiers perspective, they're going to say, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm about to go to my grave here. The least you could do for me is uh, give me a piece of your hand sandwich. So I definitely get it. If my girl was 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 nine months pregnant and you know how food is important to your to your woman when she's that far along, I would be pissed off, too. Uh, but I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. If I was a Ukrainian soldier, I'd probably be in the exact same headspace, to be honest with you. We continue. <music> Ramadan Kareem, ya Muslim. Ramadan Kareem. We continue. Shout out to all my Muslim friends all over the world. Okay, so... This is this is a day in Maripol. There was a big explosion. There was a a hospital marked children on it, and the the Russians detonated the hospital from the air. A uh, bunch of airstrikes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, destroyed uh, this hospital. And then we saw the picture of her with her baby. Very very touching moment. That's that's what she's talking about. So they that's the story is that there is this plane it went by airstrike she's saying we heard no plane we just saw an explosion it was just a shell could be a mortar could be whatever so right after these two explosions there's a guy with a camera in her face. As she's being evacuated, she's nine months pregnant. There's a camera in her face right after these explosions. Huh? That's quick. The explosions happen. Boom, boom. And then as she's being evacuated, there's, there's a guy with the camera. So that's how her picture ended up all over Time Magazine, yada, 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 yada. One of these victims of uh, Putin's Maripol massacre. Other people asked him to stop filming. He ignored them. They asked him again afterwards. He left. Is she saying the hospital wasn't bombed by the Russians, but by on her own soldiers to use as propaganda? Uh, she didn't say that. All she said was that she heard no airplane overhead. The, 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 the original story was reported that this was a um, 
a massacre, a horrible airstrike by the Russians. There was a hospital that said children on it. The Russians didn't care. They blew it up anyway. What she's saying is we heard no airplanes. There were two crashes. There were two explosions. And then as she's evacuating, there's already a guy working for the AP with a camera in her face. And that's where we are right now. The reporters were there from the beginning because the photos I looked at when I got into a calm state. Okay, so they've got real-time footage of this girl evacuating. So, as the Russian warplanes are just bombing the hell out of Maripol, destroying everything, destroying Children's Hospital, these guys are able to capture her in route as she's leaving. I'm just, we're just listening to what this woman has to say. Our country and other countries use this woman's name to promote a certain idea let's see this let's see if the same outlets time magazine cnn all these people that used her name to put out this narrative let's see if they'll have her on prime time news to tell us she only heard two blasts and she heard no airplanes that doesn't verify anything all it says is the person who was there, who we were filming, whose name, image, and likeness we used to craft a story, this is her story from the horse's mouth. If our media was only seeking to tell the truth, isn't that something that they would do immediately? And and how how is that a conspiracy theory? She was there. So she's saying, I'm assuming they were already there. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, one of the things that's really, truly frustrating me about these pictures of the dead or these pictures of people in horrible circumstances, I got to tell you, the, the neoliberal reaction to Biden's use of kids in cages has completely soured me to that whole thing. You look at a picture, you're supposed to get all emotion, you're supposed to do an action. But our feelings are only manipulated when they're supposed to be manipulated. So when Trump was doing it, it was this horrible tragedy. Rachel Maddow's crying. Everybody's crying. Now that Biden's doing the same thing, nobody's crying anymore. Nobody's crying. So now we're all crying when we saw images of this girl getting torn to shreds and her baby and the horrible situation she's in. But now she's saying something that's contrary to the to the party line let's see how concerned the media is with her now that is a problem for me i have a real problem with our with media government whatever taking pictures of people in, in horrible situations getting everybody's emotions riled up and then making it obviously clear to anybody with a brain we didn't really care about you we just wanted a picture of you in your most vulnerable, painful moment to further a political agenda. And if your picture and your face and your image and your likeness and your voice goes against that, then we're going to completely black you out and pretend you don't exist. I got a real problem with that kind of exploitation of human beings. I got to tell you, which is one of the reasons I have a serious problem with pro-life people using images of dead children when we're creating dead 28-year-old children with our me Medicare policy, but that's a different discussion. We continue. She says, no, there's no airstrike. Go ask the people in the street. There was no airstrike. Why is this the first we're hearing of it? And if it went for the gray zone, I wouldn't even have known this woman. I don't know. No, Stout, that's not how the media works. No, that's not how the media works. If it bleeds, it leads. No, I don't have a problem with them putting up crazy pictures to evoke emotions. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is these people were bombarding us with pictures of kids in cages in the Trump administration. So it was still bleeding during the, the Biden administration. They stopped, though. They stopped after the Biden administration. They made a half little acknowledgement of it and then they moved on. In the Trump administration, we heard about it and we saw it for four years. And I, I don't care about Trump or Biden because they're both the same to me. My problem is 
neoliberal media has made it exponentially clear they didn't give a fuck about those kids. They just wanted to exploit them as a cudgel for Trump. If they cared about those kids, then Biden would have been held way more accountable for his participation in the Obama administration's draconian laws, one of which was constructing the cage in the first place. How comes neoliberal media wasn't going after Biden for that while he was running for president? That's my problem. It's the selectivity of if it bleeds, it leads down. It's the selectivity of when they try to get us emotional and then when they tell us to just suck it up and move on. Trump says, good people on both sides. Oh, my God, he's a Nazi. Now we're supporting actual Nazis. Just overlook that. That's my problem. I'm sure you understand me. Her interview wasn't there. They used her face. They used her image. They used her concerned eye. They used her beat up face. They used her maternal belly. And they muted her voice because her voice said the opposite. So what did they do? They took out her voice box and just left her picture up there around the narrative that they had built for us uh, about Maripol. These people, it's more styled than their media bias. Everybody is biased. I'm biased. Everybody's biased, but all of us can be converted if we have an open mind. That's what it means to be open-minded. Is that you already have something in your mind, but you're open to having it replaced. My problem is not media bias. My, my problem is the media is cooperating with our government to specifically give us one story. And they purposely go out of the way to construct that one story so that you and I can be biased. That's my problem. Her words didn't fit their narrative. Correct, Glenn. So she was not allowed to speak. She scoured the internet. She wasn't allowed to speak. Why? He's one person. She's one person. Doesn't mean she's telling the truth, but she was credible enough for them to put her pictures all over the place and exploit her suffering in one of the scariest days of her life. But when she said she didn't hear an explosion and that there were no airstrikes and that other people she knew said there were no airstrikes, we had nothing to say to her. Unbelievable. Isn't that against the genetic fallacy you're talking about, the selectivity? I mean, if one thing made you numb to pictures, it shouldn't make us numb to all other pictures, right? I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. I don't believe the American people are numb to pictures of kids in cages. I don't believe. My point is that uh, the neoliberal media apparatus only used that because... They, uh, they believed in the goodwill of the American people and they were using it as a cudgel to get Trump out of the White House to influence them to vote for their candidate. I don't believe that we're numb to it. Our media is, though. There are very, very cynical people who will use the goodwill of American citizens and anybody in the world. They will use that goodwill to their advantage. And we've got to wake up to it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, okay. It, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, Stout says she didn't say nothing happened. She experienced explosions and said they happened. It was literally just a narrative of an airstrike. She said did not happen. Correct. You know what else I think happened? I think she let it slip that those soldiers kicked out all those kids and those women and told them we're setting up shop in this hospital for batteries because if people heard that the that the uh ukrainians were setting up shop there then the explosion of the hospital makes a little bit more sense and they didn't want that happening that's the real scandal why were you posting up soldiers in a hospital 